Hi, everybody. Lawrence Moroni here. I'm at TensorFlow World, and it's a great privilege that I have to chat with Megan Cacholia, Vice President of Engineering, um, working on TensorFlow. And you just gave a great keynote about TensorFlow and about TensorFlow 2 and some of the new things in it. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, we've been working on TensorFlow 2 for a little while, right? We talked about it at the Dev Summit earlier this year in the spring, mm -hmm. and then just finalized uh, the release in September, so just mm -hmm. last month. One big thing with TensorFlow 2 is we focused a lot on usability, right? Making it easier for users to be able to do what they need to do um, with you know cleaner, more streamlined APIs, um, better debuggability with eager mode, just try and make things simpler and easier for folks. Yeah. One of the things I really liked in your keynote was where you called out like three audiences, right? Mm -hmm. There was researchers, there was data scientists, and there was developers. Yep. And I spend most of my time working with developers, but what I'd love to really drill down on is researchers and some of the great stuff that's in TensorFlow 2 for researchers. Could you tell us about that? Sure. And I think sometimes people worry that if they want a lot of control, that's one thing researchers really like is they want to be able to try out, especially ML researchers, they want to be able to try out new things, mm -hmm. right? And they want to make sure they have that control and be able to do that. Um, and I think one thing to emphasize is that researchers still have that control with TensorFlow 2. Right? Yes, we have done a lot to try and streamline the high-level APIs because we want to make it easier for folks to come in at that point. But I know there's a lot of folks who just want to be able to go in deeper. They want to go under the covers a bit. They want to go under the hood and be able to figure out, well, I have this new model type I want to try out. I have some new model architecture I want to play with. Right. And all the things they loved about TensorFlow and being able to do that before, that's all still there. We're just trying to make sure there's also a nice, clean, high-level surface as well. It's it's not an either-or situation. There's still both. Yeah, and, and then all that great work that we've done to make it easier for software developers who aren't yep. necessarily researchers doesn't preclude that. Exactly. Everything the researchers loved is still there. Exactly. So, and with TensorFlow 2, there's also some state-of-the-art research has gone on, right? Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, just even showing today the example that I went through uh, from Hugging Face. Okay. Uh, Hugging Face has done so many cool things in the NLP, in the natural language processing space. Everyone's very excited about BERT models right now. I think yeah. you hear it like, everywhere. Bert. Everyone's talking about BERT. <laughs> I just like saying BERT. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a fun name. Um, everyone's talking about BERT right now and Transformers. Um, and you can see even they were able to implement um, some of the more advanced models in TensorFlow 2.0, mm. right? And uh, more recently they did it, and it was really exciting for us to be able to highlight that and show that, no, it wasn't you know, us, the TensorFlow team, who has all the you know, intricate knowledge of things. It was the external community being able to use this for really advanced research yeah. use cases. And, th and that's a really important thing, right? So it's like we can, uh, we can build what we know, um, but it's when people are able to take that platform and bring their yes. expertise to it. And exactly, it and do what they need to do with it. Yep. Uh, uh, that's what I find particularly inspiring yep. and really, really cool. And, and one of the other things that you drilled into was performance. Uh -huh. You know, you've been working really hard to tweak performance on yes. TensorFlow. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so performance is something that we always pay attention to. I mean, one big thing that came with TensorFlow 2.0 as well was distribution strategy, mm -hmm. right? Make it easy for people to be able to scale things up, right? And not have to worry about how do I set things? How do I do things? Like, no, let us handle more for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that we focused a lot on is just how how do you get that performance and get it in an easy way so that that way users don't have to worry, mm -hmm. right? Now again, if people want to go under the covers and tinker and tweak every last thing, that's fine. Like that's all still there. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to make sure that it's easy for them to get the performance they need. So I talked some numbers for um, GPUs, right? Looking at different types of NVIDIA GPUs, the 3x performance improvement that we're able to get there with 2.0, which is great. Yeah, it's great, those things. Um, and then in the upcoming releases, we'll have more things around TPUs mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, mixed precision support. Wow. wow. So still working hard. Yes, it's never. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just like anything else. The work keeps going. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's always new things happening. <laughs> so I'm I'm preventing the advancement of this performance by having you here to talk <laughs> no, to me. That's so right. thanks for taking the time. But, and a couple of other things as well that uh, for developers and for like tooling around developers, there's TensorBoard, right? Yes. There's been advances in that. Yes. So. 
Could you? One big thing with TensorBoard that we announced uh, here at TensorFlow World is hosted TensorBoard. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole idea here is that, again, people love to be able to share their experiments. Sometimes it's because they need help, right? right. Like, let me show you, like, can you help me see what's going on? Sometimes it's because, like, oh my gosh, look at, look at what I found, yeah. right? Like, yeah. look at the results I got. Let me show someone else. And right now, folks are generally sharing with screenshots. Mm -hmm. They'll take screenshots of TensorBoard, right, that's showing what's going on with their experiment or their current setup. And instead, we want to make it so folks can actually share their tensor board, yeah, right? Instead yeah. of sharing a picture yeah. of some snapshot in time of their tensor board. And that's where hosted tensor board comes in. Right. Uh, so this is something that we're just starting a preview release for. There's a lot of features we'll be adding over the coming months, right? Mm -hmm. As we um, stabilize it and get it to more of the general availability. Uh, but I think it's really exciting for folks to be able to take that and then make use of it to more easily share with others. Like, look, look what I'm doing. Again, and going back to the community aspect, right? The more we can enable the community to share things, uh, the better off everyone is. And, and I think it's, it's a really powerful sharing mechanism as well, as you've mentioned, because, I mean, I've gone on Twitter, I've seen screenshots yep. of uh, TensorBoard, and sometimes it's hard to believe a discovery because when you just see a screenshot. Yes. But when you can get hands-on and you can poke yes, around. And, exactly. And, and a discovery made in isolation isn't really a discovery, yep. right? It's when you're able to share like that. Yep. It's really powerful. And then on the theme of sharing, there's also TF Hub. Yes. Right? And, what's, and there's some good stuff happening there. Yes, we've tried to make it an easy of use is a big thing that mm -hmm. we're uh, continuing to emphasize. And TensorFlow Hub, uh, we wanted to make it much easier for folks to be able to go to Hub and find things, right? How can they know what there is? How do they find the models they're looking for? Um, and just how do they, you know, discoverability, right? That's always a big thing with any sort of UI element. It's like, how do people discover things? Um, and so we've made a lot of improvements on um, Tensor Hub, TensorFlow Hub in order to improve that discoverability and just make it easier for folks to find the types of pre-trained models that right. they want to use. And when they can find them easily, they can reuse them easily, exactly. they can transfer learn, they exactly. can make their own discoveries. Yep. And, and then, again, give back, right? If there's yeah. something that they find that they think, oh, this would be a great addition, right? I want to be able to share this pre-trained model. Right. We want to make sure we also have models from the community mm -hmm. on TensorFlow Hub, have curated models available there. So again, other folks can come and take it and, and use it. And kickstart that virtuous yep. cycle, which is really, really cool. So. Megan, thank you so much. As always, it's very informative and it's always a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. It's always fun to chat. <laughs> thanks, and thanks everybody for watching this video. If you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Megan, just please leave them in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.